Genetic engineering comes up a lot in the news. We often hear of scientists altering the DNA sequences of organisms in order to achieve a desired function. This may include the production of new proteins, the expression of certain traits, or the emergence of new functions. For instance, in animals, genetic engineers may alter a muscle development gene to increase muscle growth, thus giving us animals with more meat, which could help alleviate world hunger. But exactly how ethical is this? We're changing the very code that postulates everything the body does, and those of other animals too. How do the individuals affected by this feel? Could genetic engineering be used for more sinister intentions? Let's say that you're thinking of having a child. Imagine going to the hospital and designing that child, picking and choosing the traits that you think are desirable or better than other traits. How would you feel if you found out that your genetic traits were chosen by your parents because they were the desirable traits that your parents wanted you to have? With genetic engineering, scenarios like this may become a reality. Many of you may be thinking, isn't this a good thing? With genetic engineering, we can design our children to be perfect, with no genetic defects or other genetic problems. But this could result in many social problems. It could create a culture where only certain traits, such as certain hair, skin, or eye color, are considered good. People who've decided against genetic engineering could face discrimination or bullying because they don't have those desired good traits. Ethical problems arise because somebody is determining how you look based on their own personal opinions. It causes many problems as certain people are setting beauty standards for society as a whole. Animals are often a hot topic when it comes to genetic engineering. The main issue with genetically engineered animals is that we often only focus on the benefits they have for humans. This usually entails more profit from faster growth and development of the animal, more muscle growth, and production of more offspring. However, are the welfare of animals taken into account? How are they treated in captivity? Do they get clean living quarters, ample space to roam around, and a nutritious diet? Oftentimes, genetically engineered animals live in horrid conditions that are very detrimental to their health. They are jammed into small living areas with very little, if any, space to freely roam around, and their diet is far from nutritious. As if their living conditions are not bad enough, messing around with the genome of animals can lead to unintended side effects, such as increased susceptibility to stress, lameness, and genetic abnormalities, all of which can cause pain to the individual, as well as the mother of that individual. In the past 100 years, half a billion people have died from infectious diseases. Some of these diseases like Ebola are extremely deadly, once infected, survival rates are slim. Others, such as the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, spread very easily. Given the lethalness of many of these infections, there is the possibility of turning them into bioweapons. Like in World War II, where the Imperial Japanese Army used bioweapons to kill thousands in China. As if biological warfare wasn't crazy enough, with genetic editing, one could construct a pathogen to be more lethal, harder to detect, and easier to spread. Terrorists could engineer a certain bacteria to be resistant to several kinds of antibiotics. Modes of transmission could be expanded, making it easier for a pathogen to spread. People can engineer a virus to target crucial organs in the body, such as the brain or heart, to increase fatalities. The options for death and terror are endless. As genetic engineering becomes more common, people may develop a superiority mindset that humans are entitled to control the evolution of organisms. It could become normalized for nature to be full of just genetically modified organisms, with everything being a creation of or edited by humans. We may come to view ourselves as the advancers of all life on Earth, thus leading to the notion that humans control and problem solve the biosphere. This way of thinking contradicts directly with the views of environmentalists and animal conservationists who want to help wild animals survive in their natural habitats. However, the superiority mindset of humans leads them to want to genetically edit these animals so that they may improve their lives. This means that we are getting in the way of nature and natural selection, which has been happening for billions of years. Despite the fact that people think they are helping, too much meddling in the natural environment may do more harm than good. 
This includes the creation of powerful invasive species that may wipe out native species not fit to fight them off or compete with them. And these concerns have never been more relevant than they are today. Hey, Zach from the YouTube channel Everything Science here. It's true that genetic engineering has given rise to problems we've never experienced, like the widespread destruction of natural genetic diversity that helps give rise to superbugs. And whereas before, superbugs really only affected a single species, now, because scientists are inserting genes from one species into dozens of others, it sets the stage for a single, powerful bug to be able to wipe out dozens of plant and animal species. Even more than that, genetic engineering can create selective pressures to create stronger pathogens, create new, deadly allergens, and could end up threatening the food supplies of billions of people around the globe. To learn more about the harms genetic engineering poses to the food we depend upon, be sure to check out my video after this one. Back to you, Scienceverse. Zach is right. At the end of the day, genetic engineering does have a lot of negative aspects to it. However, if done the right way, it could have a lot of benefits. Genetically modified bacteria can be used to produce proteins such as insulin or human growth hormone, which can then be given to people suffering from diabetes and dwarfism respectively. Genetically modified crops that are resistant to pests can be planted in order to increase yield and end food shortages. We can change the nucleotide sequence of certain genes in order to stop the harmful effects of a certain disease. As long as we carefully regulate everything, ensure all people and animals are being treated right, and address specific ethical concerns, genetic engineering will help save lives and many world problems and relieve the pain of those suffering debilitating illnesses. So if you want to keep exploring the untapped potential of genetic engineering, be sure to stay tuned for more science videos.